wonderful boy. You brave, brave man. Let us walk. One of Harry Potter's most interesting relationships is that of his and Albus Dumbledore's, a complicated dynamic between a chess master and his favourite piece. The complexities of this relationship come about due to the fact that the relationship probably would not have formed were it not for the Second Wizarding War and Harry's status as the Chosen One, and the facets and nuances of this particular dynamic stem first and foremost from Dumbledore himself. From his role within the Wizarding War and the way in which he acts as the chess master for the entirety of the series. Regardless of Rowling's intentions for the character, it's hard not to view Dumbledore as a master manipulator, pushing his pieces around the board, especially when it comes to Harry and the way in which Dumbledore essentially raises him for the slaughter. Dumbledore manipulates Harry for most of his life, ensuring that by the time Harry reaches the inevitable showdown with Voldemort, he is ready and willing to die. It is very easy to resent Dumbledore for this and everything he subjects Harry to in order to achieve it, but what should be kept in mind is the goal Dumbledore is working towards and the lengths people have to go to for the greater good in times of war. For the greater good was Dumbledore and Grindelwald's mantra, and while Dumbledore eventually grows disenchanted with Grindelwald and their original vision for the future, he never loses this for the greater good mind frame, and this is never demonstrated clearer than through his treatment of and relationship with Harry. It must not be forgotten that Dumbledore is fighting a war, a war which has been raging since before Harry was even born, a war which has seen countless innocent lives damaged and lost. Dumbledore is at the center of this war, and his ultimate goal is to rid the world of Voldemort once and for all to make it so the wizarding world never again has to live through the terror which Voldemort's war brought down upon them. Everything Dumbledore does, from the first wizarding war to his death in the Half-Blood Prince, is motivated by this goal. He has his pieces on the board and he moves them where he needs them, deftly and with little fanfare, knowing who to collect, how to use those he takes in, where to send them and which tasks to assign them. He is one of the shrewdest characters in the series able to read people and predict their actions and therefore knowing how to use them accordingly and we see him do all of this to Harry, shaping and reforming Harry into the saviour the wizarding world needs him to be. What sets Dumbledore's relationship with Harry apart from his other chess pieces and what makes it more complicated and more complex is that Dumbledore genuinely cares about Harry and takes an active interest in his life. We see with some of Dumbledore's other relationships that the headmaster does not always hold affection for those in his closest circle. An example of this is Severus Snape, whom Dumbledore initially does not even like and who he is more than willing to send into the heart of the beast, placing him in dangerous situations which could see him tortured or killed. While Dumbledore trusts Snape due to Snape's remorse over Lily's death, he is not shown to be particularly fond of or close to the potions master and does not seem overly concerned with Snape's well-being. This is not the case with Harry. Despite everything he puts Harry through, Dumbledore genuinely likes and admires him, and we see many instances of Dumbledore being kind to Harry, often offering Harry compassion and advice, and letting Harry know that he is on his side. Dumbledore's affection for Harry stems not only from the fact that Harry is a genuinely good and likable person, but also from Dumbledore identifying with Harry and, more significantly, seeing Harry as the person he wished that he himself could have been. There are many parallels drawn between Harry and Dumbledore. Both suffered major losses young in life, both have ties to the same physical place with Godric's Hollow, and both had unwanted responsibility placed on their shoulders at a young age. Dumbledore sees the similarities between them, but he also recognizes the differences between himself and Harry and the way in which they responded to these similar events and traumas. He recognizes Harry's goodness and the way Harry is able to be selfless and put others first, taking on responsibility without complaint or question. But more than this, Dumbledore recognizes that Harry has no delusions of grandeur and no desire for glory or greatness. Dumbledore himself succumbed to these pitfalls and aimed for glory and power. And in retrospect of what it cost him, he admires that Harry doesn't share this downfall 
and even wishes that he had made the same choices that Harry did. While Dumbledore's genuine care and affection for Harry probably came as a surprise to the headmaster, who obviously had no idea of the type of person Harry would grow into, both proved beneficial to his overall plan. Because Dumbledore developed such genuine affection for the boy who lived, he ends up forging a deep relationship with Harry, which in turn allows Harry to grow close to and come to trust, admire, and respect Dumbledore. And this ultimately helps Harry to understand Dumbledore's plan and the path set out for him as the chosen one. For the majority of the series, Harry has mostly positive feelings about Dumbledore and he develops a close bond with the headmaster. Having grown up in the abusive environment which the Dursleys created, Harry has never known adults whom he could trust or reach out to or who were ever even particularly interested in him, leaving Harry with feelings of isolation and a tendency to rely solely on himself. Dumbledore embodies the traits missing in the Dursleys, showing great interest in Harry, allowing Harry to confide in him and demonstrating that he could be trusted and trusting Harry in return. For the first four books, Dumbledore is a close advisor and confidant of Harry's and he often allows Harry to get away with wrongdoings and bends the rules for him, which provides Harry with a sense of Dumbledore being in his corner and always on his side, something which Harry has not previously experienced from the adults in his life. Dumbledore does not often chastise Harry and he validates Harry's feelings and offers confidences, all of which build Dumbledore greatly in Harry's esteem and helps to solidify the bond between them. The strength of this bond, as well as the open and honest dynamic between Harry and the headmaster, explains why Harry has such a negative and explosive reaction to Dumbledore's secrecy and sudden lack of communication in Order of the Phoenix. For four years, Harry has trusted Dumbledore and known that he could turn to the headmaster for confidence and advice, that Dumbledore is in his corner and that he will always communicate openly and honestly with him. Order of the Phoenix changes this dynamic as Dumbledore's fear that his closeness to Harry will allow Voldemort to use Harry affects their relationship, which in turn causes Harry to feel isolated and spurned by one of the few adults he always thought he could count on. Harry's eventual outburst in Dumbledore's office after Sirius's death is pivotal to their relationship, as it is the first time Dumbledore has fallen in Harry's eyes and his anger at Dumbledore comes from feeling betrayed by the headmaster. It should be noted that Dumbledore allows Harry this anger and allows Harry to yell and scream ugly, horrible things at him, not only because he knows he is at fault in the situation, but more importantly, because it's what Harry needs in the moment. While Dumbledore can and does put the greater good and the mission before Harry's well-being, he also does look out for and help Harry through his trauma, allowing Harry to express himself and his emotions in a safe environment. This is incredibly important, not just within the dynamic of the relationship, but for Harry in general, as Harry is a person who often suppresses his emotions, both due to his abusive upbringing as well as his introverted nature, and so Dumbledore allowing him to fully express his emotions helps Harry to move on and heal from his trauma as he is able to vocalize his pain and therefore work through it. Dumbledore gains back part of Harry's trust and confidence over the course of the Half-Blood Prince as he discloses Voldemort's past to Harry and confides his mission to destroy the Horcruxes. Once again, Dumbledore makes Harry feel appreciated and included and shows that he trusts Harry's judgment and values Harry as a person. Dumbledore's death at the end of the book deeply affects Harry and spurns his resolution to continue the mission to destroy the Horcruxes. As Scrimgeour says, Harry is Dumbledore's man through and through. However, Harry's faith in Dumbledore is once again shattered with the revelations of Dumbledore's checkered past and history with Grindelwald when Rita Skeeter releases her book in the Deathly Hallows. As someone who has never been swayed by the dark side and who can, at times, be a tad self-righteous, Harry has a very hard time fathoming younger Dumbledore's actions and his mentor falls hard off his pedestal leaving Harry feel betrayed by the headmaster once more. Coupled with the near impossible mission Dumbledore has left him, as well as his unresolved feelings over Dumbledore's death, Rita's revelations cause Harry to lose faith in Dumbledore. And he admits that while Dumbledore seemed to be a constant and trustworthy presence in Harry's life, Harry actually did not know him all that well. 
Harry spends much of the final book working through his anger at Dumbledore, hurt and confused by the revelations of his past. And it's not until Aberforth's angry recounting of Ariana's death that Harry fully appreciates what Dumbledore went through and, more significantly, realizes what Dumbledore was reliving during the quest to retrieve the locket in the Half-Blood Prince. Through Aberforth's revelations, Harry is able to recognize that while Dumbledore did make mistakes, he carried the regret over those mistakes for the rest of his life, feeling deep and real guilt over his shortcomings. By the end of Aberforth's tale, Harry finally accepts that, far from being some all-knowing mystical mentor, Dumbledore was, like all the adults in Harry's life, human, with very human flaws and shortcomings. When Harry enters Snape's memories after the Potion Master's death, he comes to further understand Dumbledore and sees that it was not just Harry whom Dumbledore manipulated and ordered about. Harry comes to understand that there was a greater purpose to the Headmaster's actions and that everything Dumbledore did and everyone he used was genuinely for the greater good, to rid the world of Voldemort once and for all. The Dumbledore of Snape's memories allows Harry to see the clear path to end Voldemort and, coupled with Dumbledore's many lessons and confidences, Harry is able to accept his final fate and walk into the forest to meet death. When he meets Dumbledore in the afterlife, he is able to accept and forgive him because he finally understands the stakes and the goal Dumbledore has worked towards for so many years of his life. More importantly, he knows that, underneath it all, the headmaster did truly care for him and did genuinely admire and respect him. Harry accepts Dumbledore, flaws, manipulations, grand schemes and all, and he finds peace with the headmaster and with himself. At the end of the day, it is understandable why some fans do not like Dumbledore's treatment of Harry and why they get so angry with Dumbledore over everything Harry had to endure at his hands. This was a complex and complicated relationship between a chess master and a pawn, with clear feelings of affection between the two, but also a tangle of lies, manipulations and emotions with a giant and dire overall scheme at play. However, I do not believe that the books would have been as rich or as compelling without it.